Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, so I wanted to talk about some interesting poetry that I've, that I've found. And today's poetry is all about uh, car crashes and bus stations. I am referring to Ode by Paisley Rectal. For those who don't know, Paisley Rectal is an, uh, a Chinese, Norwegian, American, multiracial poet uh, who um, has been writing since around the year 2000. Uh, they've, um, they've, they typically write about uh, gender, identity, sexuality, mythology, those sorts of ideas. Uh, and they've, they also teach um, at the University of Utah, which is very unfortunate for them that they have to be in the state of Utah. Uh, that's pretty much all I know about uh, Paisley besides some of the poetry that I found from them as of late. Uh, and I'm from what I've from what I've read, I am a pretty big fan, so I can't wait to share the poem with you. So uh, um, without further ado, I'm going to read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we'll move on from there. Ode. And now the silver ripping sound of white on white, the satin light snow torn under wheels, car bang metally grenading, and the wood poles whipping loom. I have always wanted to sing a song of praise for the unscathed, myself stepping from the fractured car whose black axles one inch from gone, slim pole slicing cable up to sheet metal, seat foam, corduroy, like butter, the mechanic will later tell me, poking a stiff finger through the cloth to pierce the exact point I was supposed to sit, stopping because praise begins where pain transfigures itself, stoppered by a deeper kind of joy. So I transfigure myself from driver to survivor, the blessed Lazarine failure bolting up and opening her eyes, and here are the thousand wrecks from a life configured in snow before me. Myself at five, pulled from the burning car seat. At twelve, bleeding from the scalp after the car throws me from my bike. At fourteen, tumbling over the slick hood, rushing. Sockets of windows with glass, bashed out into a translucent to the ring. Lights and bumpers clip clean off. Tires burst. Deer gravitationally hurled through my windshield, brakes given out, and worse, the icy loop-de-loops on roads, the trucker's 18 fat wheels squealing, all the ways technology should have killed me and didn't. Praise for my death-hungry luck and all the manner in which I've failed it, marriage lost, buried in the blanks of white space, my solitude at the Greyhound station knowing no one to retrieve me, Careless among the other pressed tight to their own disaster or boredom. Unbearably young mothers, drifters, boy soldiers, soldier to shoulder with the insane. Weaving the same thread of conversation back and forth between ourselves. How could this happen to me at this age, at this stage? How did I not notice? And will you put the seat up? And will you lend me this quarter? And will you call me a cab when you when we get back home? The young man in the seat before me, head full of zigzagging tight braids, says, Sure, you can dig up that ballot box in Florida, and while you're at it, look up all the bones buried in the Everglades. Repeats it for the amusement of the woman across from him, who knows a presidential failure like she knows herself. And when we pass my accident on the road points and wickles, whistles snickers bet you no one walked away from that one for this and for all these things praise to the white plains of wyoming highway coiled like a length of rime colored rope to snow broiling in the sunlight so that the landscape takes on a nuclear glow so bright we have to shield our eyes from it Praise for myself playing at morbidity because I thought I had a right to it. As if flesh had to follow spirit to such a pure depth, the bones themselves could not rest but must be broken. 
nerve singed then ripped out, the heart clenched madly in its chest, as if I had nothing except this white earth, this smashed car to praise what I knew before and know even better now, the hills cold as a hip bone and tufted with ice, praise to my youth and to my age, praise to ambition and small-mindedness, the kind I recognize and the kind I am soon to recognize. Praise to self-hatred for it keeps me alive, and praise for the splinters of delight that can pierce it. Praise for wood pole, praise for glass, praise for muscle, praise for bone. The sky is bright as a bowl on a nurse's table today, and the sun gleams into it as our bus slides by, the light of us a wash of gold illuminating bodies lost, bodies regained, gleaming like my heart here on this earth, bloody and still beating. In terms of ana analysis, that was owed uh, by Paisley Rectal. Uh, you know, uh, analyzing this poem is very interesting because it's it, there's a lot to it, uh, and it's a very beautiful poem, I will say. In terms of, of narrative, uh, the narrator is talking about uh, being in multiple car wrecks, um, and this recent one seeming to happen happening uh, after uh, their marriage failed. Um, so not, not a very good time in their life. They're at a bus station where everyone is, uh, you know, there for different reasons. Uh, there's appears to be a homeless person. There's couples traveling together. Uh, it appears to be sort of a, a way station for the, for the lost and the damned, I, I would say, uh, just for, uh, people who, you know, aren't, aren't at the best place in their life or who are transitioning to somewhere else. And the narrator, uh, just notes that at the end of the poem, they're, they're on the bus, they're looking at the snow, kind of reminds them of their accident. Uh, but they're praising, you know, um, uh, them, themselves, they're praising their luck and their survival. They're also praising the car uh, and and noting the the pain that they felt. But at the very end of the poem, they note, uh, you know, on this earth, bloody and still beating, noting that their heart is is still there, that they're still alive even after all of this. Uh, so you know, you could interpret it two different ways uh, here. You could interpret it as a a sort of poem lamenting their their position in life, and you know it. it it makes sense. Um, they've been through quite a bit. This narrator. Uh, it could be Paisley's own life, but it could it could just be um, a, a, a fictional narrator. Uh, but uh, talking about like a life of wrecks. So from a life configured in snow before me, myself at five pulled from the burning car seat at twelve. Uh, later in life, um, and then uh, talking about all the ways technology should have killed her, but didn't. Saying she's Honestly, the narrator is quite lucky to be alive in this poem. That it's a uh, that it's uh, it's it's been a very difficult life for her, and she's she's persevered through through all of it. Uh, and but you know, it's it's not only been you know those physical struggles. It's also been uh, you know feeling lost, feeling mentally not all there, uh, pa partially because of the mental effects of going through all of that struggle, of the trauma that's probably built up. You know, it's probably hard to drive a car because of all of that. Uh, the marriage that they've they've lost, um, uh, like they like they they feel like they failed it, so that's not going well for them. Uh, and you know they they don't really have that uh, much to go on right now because they lo lost their car because of the car wreck, and they're traveling on a bus filled with other people who seem wayward and lost, which only probably amplifies their their situation there. Uh, so I really like how, uh, the the sort of content and the the theme of the poem of, of of trying to survive, and then noting you know there's praise for all of that. There's uh, uh, trying to think of all the positives that that go along with this. Like even though like it, even though you've struggled through so much, you're still alive, and and that's probably what uh, what counts most. But I also like uh, how uh, how the narrator describes things in this poem. Uh, she says, For this and for all these things, praise to the white plains of Wyoming, highway coiled like a length of rime-colored rope, to snow broiling in the sunlight so that the landscape takes on a nuclear glow. And I really like that right there. Uh, like, the snow is so bright. I've, I'm from Iowa, so, like, I, I know what it's like to, to just stare at, like, the at the snow when the sun is out, and just, it kind of almost blinds you because it's so, so 
bright. And then like uh, the white plains of, of Wyoming with the road kind of snaking through the, the town, you really get a good idea for uh, what kind of path uh, this woman is taking or this narrator is taking uh, in this poem. Uh, so very beautiful. And, and I like the, the content and sort of uh, the message that uh, Rechdel is getting across with this poem too. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Ode uh, by Paisley Rechdel. You, you might note that like this poem is called Ode and we typically put odes to, you know, other things, monumental things, but maybe her survival is a monumental thing. Uh, so that's another qual high quality thing about the poem. Uh, yeah, so if you read this before, you simply have something to comment on my review. Would love to hear from you. Comment below so we can have a discussion about this. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And also join the Discord um, so that other people can find out about this uh, uh, this uh, poem or this poet or even Poetry Thursday if they don't already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and car wreck related travels. Farewell. <laughs>